heavy buildings or structures make the ground compress a little over time due to their weight. The compression of soil is known as settlement of soil. Total settlement of soil has primarily three components immediate settlement, consolidation settlement or primary consolidation, creep settlement or secondary consolidation. The total settlement of soil is sum of all three factors. Consolidation settlement is the most dominant factor of the total settlement. It refers to the settlement of soil that occurs because applied load causes the rearrangement of soil particles and dissipation of excess pore water pressure in saturated soils. We have learned all this in our previous video. To estimate the amount of settlement and rate of consolidation, we perform consolidation test on soil sample in laboratory. The consolidation test also helps determine various soil properties of clay relevant to consolidation such as permeability, swelling behavior of soil and coefficient of consolidation. Though the whole process of this test is more lengthy than what we are going to discuss here in this video, but for the simplicity and that the video doesn't get too long, we divide it into two or probably more parts. For this video, our objective is to observe the compression of soil with time under one static load. We are going to look at a rate of settlement and the time it takes for pore water to drain under pressure. The test is carried out in a device called oidometer or consolidometer. This device has two main components a loading system that applies pressure and a container for soil sample known as consolidation cell. Top and bottom of the sample are equipped with porous stone discs. These discs enable two-way vertical drainage allowing water to flow freely in and out of the soil. Keep in mind that it is a schematic diagram. Actual system is a bit different. The soil is carefully placed inside the consolidation cell. Then a load is placed on top of the cell. The soil is allowed to consolidate means settle until practically no further compression occurs. This ensures all excess water pressure within the pores is entirely dissipated. Typically the load is maintained for a full day that is for 24 hours. A dial gauge is used to measure the deformation of the soil specimen in the vertical direction. The dial gauge readings are recorded at various time intervals after applying the load. Last reading is taken at 24 hours. We plot the change in dial gauge readings which represent soil settlement against time to create a time settlement curve. The curve exhibits similar shape for different soils but the position of the curve can vary significantly due to the differences in consolidation rates as observed in the case of clay and sand. We can observe a rapid initial decrease in the thickness of the clay sample, but it gradually slows down with time. Also that there is practically no change in thickness after 24 hours. If we draw this curve for sand, we note that sand experiences a very swift reduction in thickness that flattens within minutes. This demonstrates that most of the sand's compression occurs almost instantly. It is so because of the high permeability of the sand which allows water to escape easily. This is why structures built on sand experience minimal settlement after construction as most of the settlement will already have taken place by the time the structure is complete. Using this graph, 
we determine the coefficient of consolidation CV, which is useful for obtaining the rate of consolidation in the field, which means it tells us how fast a soil squeezes out water and gets denser under load. There are two methods for determining the coefficient of consolidation using the graph. One square root of time method which is also called square root fitting. Second is logarithm of time method which is also called logarithmic fitting. The square root of time method is typically used for analyzing consolidation data in high permeability soils like sand. We use square root of time on one of the axes because these soils settle very quickly. Conversely, the logarithm of time method is better suited for low permeability soils like clays, which consolidate much slower and require a different approach to account for the extended time frame. So we use log scale of time on one of its axes. We may discuss these approaches in our coming videos, but consolidation test has more to offer. We increase loadings on the consolidation cell and obtain more data, which can help us determine how much compression of soil is taking place because of the applied load by plotting a graph between the void ratio and effective stress. But that is for the next video. If you think elementary engineering has given you knowledge, that worth something to you, consider supporting this channel on Patreon. Spreading a word about elementary engineering will also be of great help. Thank you for your love and support. You can find the links of books and other sources I referred for the creation of this video in the description. Read Consolidation Test and Time Settlement Curve at elementaryengineeringlibrary.com. Thank you.